Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Logan. I'm currently a third year medical student and recently I got the COVID Pfizer vaccine. And since then, I've been getting a lot of questions about it as well as hearing a lot of concerns about if I'm going to grow some kind of third eye or turn into some kind of mutant. So I want to address those concerns as well as give you all the facts that you're going to need to know over the next few months about this vaccine. So I'm going to talk about how it works, how they tested it, the side effects, and how it came out so fast. So let's get into it. First, how does it work? So the vaccine is an mRNA vaccine, but what does that mean? So this is what COVID looks like. I'm sure you've seen this picture somewhere in the last few months, but these little pointy things are the spike proteins. And it's these spike proteins that the vaccine targets. So what happens is the vaccine injects a code for these spike proteins and your body makes these spike proteins and through a long string of processes makes antibodies to them. So when you run into the real coronavirus or you get infected with the real virus, then you already have antibodies to it and you can fight it off as soon as it gets in your system. It's like if your friend takes a test the day before you take the test and then they come and give you all the questions and tell you everything that was on the test, you're gonna be pretty ready. It's the same concept with the vaccine. You're making antibodies to the spike protein in advance so that when you come in contact with a real virus, you're ready and you can fight it off. So what about the side effects and how do they find these? The study until now has had 44,000 people and they split this group into two subgroups of both of 22,000 people, roughly. And one of those groups got the vaccine and one of them did not. And in the group that did get the vaccine, about 18,000 of those people got the second dose. And in the group that did not get the vaccine, there was 162 cases of COVID and the group that did get the vaccine there was eight. So what about the side effects? What do these people experience? Well some of these people had some kind of soreness or tenderness at the injection site where they got the shot really similar to what happens with the flu vaccine if you ever had that and some of them had some fatigue some of them had a fever and some of them reported a headache and these are described as side effects but really it's just your immune system working and making those antibodies for you. So think about if you get a common cold. You get some fevers, you might get some muscle pains, you might be just a little tired all the time. That's because your immune system is fighting off whatever is infecting you. And it's the same concept with this, except you're not actually infected with the virus. You just have these spike proteins that your immune system is making a response to so that when you come in contact with the real virus, you're ready. So what about serious side effects? Well, of the 18,000 people that got the second dose of the vaccine, there was one case of shoulder injury, one case of pins and needles sensations in the legs, one case of a heart arrhythmia, and one case of a lymph node swelling in the armpit. And that's pretty much it. There were zero deaths noted from the vaccine and zero cases of infertility noted. One thing I've seen a lot of people talk about regarding the vaccine is this facial paralysis or Bell's palsy kind of thing. And there were four cases of that noted in the 18,000 people that got the second dose of the vaccine. But if you take a group of 18,000 people randomly from anywhere, you're gonna have four to six cases of Bell's palsy. So if you wanna attribute the facial paralysis or the Bell's palsy to the vaccine, you would have to have significantly more cases than the general population, which just was not the case. Next, how did it come out so fast? That doesn't make any sense. Most vaccines take up to three years. Well, yes, that is true. But for most vaccines, there's people working on vaccine A, vaccine B, C, D, all for different diseases all across the world and they're all in different timelines. But for COVID, the majority of these people are all working towards one common goal. And when you have that many people working towards one specific thing, it speeds up the process tremendously. And secondly, one of the major barriers to vaccine production in regular life is money, obviously. <laughs> but with COVID, most of the vaccine research has been subsidized by the government. So it has sped it up tremendously. And there's a couple other things that have helped speed up production also. Like this isn't the first spike protein vaccine. Like we've been working on that kind of stuff for many, many years. So when you combine all of those things, it has sped up the process tremendously. So what about long-term side effects? Well, honestly, we don't know. But you know what we also don't know the long-term side effects for? COVID. And a good example of this is chicken pox. A long time ago, people used to just think, you get your spots, you have it as a kid, and you're good to go. But then 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, people were getting shingles. And now we found out that it's the same virus, it's just reactivated. And we have no idea if a similar process could be with COVID. We don't know what it's gonna look like five, 10, 15 years from now. But what we do know is that this vaccine has caused exactly zero deaths. COVID has killed millions of people and put even more people out of a job and touched almost every single person on this entire planet. And lastly, the other concern I've seen from people is, why should I take a vaccine when there's a 99% survival rate? Well, one, 99% survival means 1% of people die, which is a huge amount of people. Two, even if you survive it fine, then what happens if you spread it to other people that are more susceptible? And three, if you don't consider any other people and you're just worried about yourself, think of it like this. Would you play a game of Russian roulette if there was a 1% chance that you would die? But if you take a vaccine that might make you a little fatigued, a little tired, give you a little muscle soreness, 
then there's a 95% chance that you don't even have to play the game. What would you do? So you have every right to be skeptical. I understand it's very new. I understand all this is very, very scary. And I understand that you want what's best for you, your family, and your health. But the testing has been done, and this vaccine can help us get back to a normal life. And more importantly, save millions and millions of people, one of which might be someone you love. So at least consider it. If you want to read a little more about it, or if you want to do a little more research, I've linked the actual Pfizer article in the description. The peer-reviewed published article with all the side effects and everything you would need to know is in the description. And I've also linked some other videos that I think are very helpful. And if you have any questions or any other comments, I would love to discuss this more in the comments. So until next time, stay safe.